this season on The Biggest Loser. It's all about family. Those who are sworn to it. Husbands and wives on the right. Versus those who are born to it. Parents and kids on the left. Jillian has all the parents and their children. There's Michelle and Renee, who've not seen each other in six years. My parents divorced, and I felt like there was something about me that wasn't good enough. This does not look sexy. Shalay and Amy, a funny mother and daughter team who are classic enablers. <laughs> Do not get involved. Your involvement has brought her here. Do not get involved. Tom and LT. Two working class cab drivers from Boston. You can do this. Oh, I'm not like Tom. Yes, you are. You're his dad. And Colleen and Jerry, whose situation is so dire, he may not be able to stay in the game. <laughs> You've got every risk factor known in medicine. Bob has all the husbands and wives. There's Ed and Heba, newlyweds who want to get healthy so they can start a family together. I think we want to have children in about three years and... We are in no shape to do that right now. Vicky and Brady, whose bad eating habits have already rubbed off on their young children. I feel 100% responsible for my daughter. And Phil and Amy, who put on all of their weight after their young son was diagnosed with autism. We're going to come back to home. Yes, we'll come back to home. Last week, Bob lost Adam and Stacy. Green team, I'm sorry to tell you that you have been eliminated. Find out tonight which family will continue their journey together. Bend your ass down and pick up the weight. But in the end, it won't matter if you're a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a daughter, or a son. Because there can only be one biggest loser. I know it was hard for you guys to make that decision. And it really means a lot for us to just get a, a little more time here. Green team, I'm sorry to tell you that you have been eliminated. Someday we really want to start a family, and I have to get healthy to do that. And I know it was a hard decision. We appreciate it, and uh, we promise we won't let you down. You, you made the right choice. and. And thank you for giving us your extra vote. Yes, we owe you a debt of gratitude yeah. for that, so. Just keep working hard. We'll be watching out for you as well. I kind of saved the honors team from going home because I had an extra vote. I hope come this week, if some reason I fall below the line, that they get my back. Stacy and Adam were just so well liked by the whole house. So we're just wearing headbands, you know. Just to uh, let Stacy and Adam know that we're still thinking about them and we still love them very much. Wow. Good morning, Bob. Hi, babe. This season, I've got all the husbands and wives, and my green team's gone Adam and Stacy. I was so sad about that. They were special. But it's like, it's a casualty of war. I feel bad for them. This is what happens in this house. I know. Somebody's going to go home every week, and next week it's going to be the exact same thing. Yeah. And we've got to figure out what we can do so you don't have to go through this anymore. 
Ed and I never want to be under the yellow line again, and I could see it in him, and Bob said, it's not time to be sad, it's time to focus. Week two is notorious for just being like a shutdown mode. Week two sucks. The body is in shock. It's lost so much weight in the first week that it is sitting there going like, hold on a minute. And that's why in week two, the numbers are really low. So now it's our job to make sure our bodies are properly fed and continue to work out the way we're doing. I did know that week two's numbers drop dramatically from watching the show, so I anticipate the numbers to drop. I just hope that Jillian's team's numbers drop more than ours. <laughs> we need you to lose a little bit more because your, your percentage needs to be a little bit higher. Let's step up our exercise a little bit and keep you hydrated. Week two in The Biggest Loser House is notoriously tough. People tend to lose little, if any, weight and occasionally gain. I'm doing everything I can to try for that not to happen. And I think that we can easily do that by just stepping up our intensity a little bit. You okay? What happened? You're not okay. No, I think I'm just really tired. You sure? She was upset earlier, too. She started crying in the room. What about? She wouldn't talk. All right, do me a favor. Everyone hit the gym. You too, Mom. Okay. Jillian knows that my family dealt with the issue of divorce, and it's hard. My mom left my dad. She took my two sisters with her, and I stayed with my dad. That, for me, was really a devastating moment in my life. For five and a half years, we didn't speak. Now, being here at the ranch and spending 24 hours a day, seven days a week with her, my brain was just overwhelmed. And so Jillian this morning, she sent everybody off to the gym. She and I met one-on-one. -on -one. What's the matter? Well, I think, you know, it all goes back to my parents' divorce and me feeling some sort of need to be responsible for the rest of my family. So your mom and your dad are together. She falls out of love. She leaves him for another man. And you then stepped into her role as the facilitator. Yeah. And then you are just sick inside because you're in a position where you're resenting your mom, you're angry at your mom. I can't feel very good. When I see my mom sometimes, it's like, almost like pouring salt on that wound because I felt for so long, well, it's her fault that I feel this way. And that puts you at a place where you're just miserable. Your mom did the best thing she ever could have done by leaving that marriage. Do you know why? She wasn't happy. Would you want your children to be in a relationship, a loveless marriage? And I know that's gotta be painful to hear, but if she wasn't in love, baby, she wasn't in love. Right. For once in her life, she put herself first. Have you ever done that? No. And where are you? <clears throat> Not very happy right now. It could be the greatest gift she will ever give you. The truth of the matter is that you need to take care of you. Nobody else is going to fix this for me. I have to fix this. And I have to tell myself every day, I'm worth fixing. I'm worth giving 100% for. Otherwise, Nothing's really being accomplished. I can lose weight, but it'll all come right back. By the way, 17 pounds. Way to go. <laughs>
This is the one place where we don't need a yellow line. It's a positive place, and the yellow line is not a positive thing. So it's going to be one big happy family back in the gym. Bob and Jillian's gym. Been on my side? Yeah. Uh oh. I come into the gym, and Bob has torn up the yellow line. I think that's awesome. <laughs> what do you think? I like What's it. it like on the dark it feels side? Good. He can come on my side of the gym if he dares. <laughs> Hang on. Good. Run it out. Go. Left, right. Left, right. Jillian let us know that week two is typically a, a plateau. Ah! Oh, come on. Ah! Fight for it, Colleen. Let's go. Let's go. Last week, having immunity was a great cushion. Now, nothing but solid, cold gym floor that we have to fall back on. Nice, chair. The difference between last week and this week are like night and day. When I started here, I truly felt the like dying. <laughs> You're one of the sickest people ever to be put on the show. It felt good not to have somebody taking my blood pressure every half hour. I'm not 100%, but I'm getting there. Despite the aches, the pains, I feel actually pretty good. Good, come on up. Go, go, go. Get it. Jillian has already made it perfectly clear she's going to do whatever she needs to do to keep her team above that line. So if it means six, seven, eight, or nine hours in the gym, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Today was the first day that I wasn't scared to work out with Bob. I was ready for it because I know what I need to do to stay here. Two <laughs> and one. Do not drop this. Two, one, perfect. Bob took us into the gym today, and he pulled a can opener out of his back pocket and opened up a major can of whip ass. One more. After losing 28 pounds, you know, I'm very nervous in the fact that I've got a uh, huge bullseye on my back right now. You know, I hope I can pull off a great number again this week. Do it again. Control yourself. Don't drop yourself to the ground like a bitch. I forgot about it. It's always, like, not good. Oh, my gosh. It just, like, freaks me out. The stats are so stacked against us. Good morning, everyone. Hey. Hey, Allie. Hey. <laughs> it's nice to see you all. I have a little something I want to talk to you about. So if you wouldn't mind meeting me in the other room. Come on. Whenever Allie walks in, we know something's coming up. I'm like, uh-oh, what are we going to do today? I've watched the show on TV a lot. So I was thinking it was some kind of gambling, temptation-ish type thing. I think you'll figure out where to sit. There's red. We walked into the room and we saw ping pong paddles. They all had team colors on them, but there was only one paddle. So I, uh, I really didn't know what to think. I just, you know, me and my son looked at each other. We were like, well, what the hell is this? First of all, congratulations on an amazing first week. You all should be really proud of yourselves. Pink team, a 6.09%. That's 31 pounds. Gray team lost 6.26%. That's 42 pounds, guys. Purple team lost 29 pounds, 6.37%. Brown team, you lost 47 pounds. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Unbelievable, 8.1%. You all have so much to be proud of. But you are all about to face the dreaded week two plateau. In five seasons of The Biggest Loser, the average percentage of weight loss during the second week is approximately 2%. The average for the second week is 2%. And last week we lost 6.37%. It was like a big difference, which is kind of scary. Since this is such a difficult week, I wanted to make it rewarding. So today, one team is going to put their money where their mouth is. One family will have the chance to win $10,000. <laughs> but there is a catch. One family could walk away from this week $10,000 richer. So this is what we're going to do. I will give you all the chance to bid on the percentage of weight that you think you can lose this week. The highest bidder will be playing for $10,000 at the weigh-in. If that team loses the percentage of weight loss that they bid on, they will win 10,000 cash. But there is a catch. If they fail to achieve their goal, they are automatically below the yellow line and in danger of elimination. I have watched a lot of people get up on that scale in week two. 
And I could tell you every single time they were shocked or unhappy. I've seen in seasons past where somebody would lose 13 pounds the first week and one pound the next week. No way. He didn't lose any weight this week. That could be me. I could be the one pound this week. So it all comes down to how confident you feel about how much weight you can lose. Elson said that 2.0 is the average percentage of weight loss for all Biggest Loser seasons to the state. So I thought 2.0, okay, you know, we did 4.25 last week. Averages are meant to be broken. People do it every day, and we really want to be two of those people. I think it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Since the average is 2%, we should start at half that. Anyone interested in bidding? One percent. I'm not bidding. I think two point five. Mm -mm. Red team. Phil steps right up. I was the first one to put my toe in the water. Going to several auctions myself, I knew that you've got to get it going. People, their minds kick into another gear. They forget reality for a minute. And I wanted to get Jillian's team up there so high that automatically they would fall below the yellow line. Do I hear 1.1% for $10,000? LT's in. I've been driving a cab for about two years to win 10000 I could take a nice vacation when I get out of here. I mean, go away for a month or so. Just relax. I mean, this right now is torture. It's not something that's fun. That's right. LT, Tom in at 1.1%. Do I hear 1.2? $10,000. Purple team is in. Chalet. I think it's doable, so why not? Get in and see what happens, and why not win the 10,000? 1.2, Amy and Chalet, they want 10 grand. Who's in at 1.3? Being below the yellow line week one played a huge part in the fact that we decided not to play the game. I will not take any chances being below that yellow line a second time. 1.3%. Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks they can do 1.4? You can't win if you don't play. Colleen? jumps right in at 1.4%. You're not even anywhere near the average, which is 2%. Phil, 1.5%. LT, 1.6%. Yellow team, Colleen. Who thinks they can lose 1.8%? LT says he can. They want that 10 grand. Colleen, we got a bidding war here. There Purple team, 1.9%. How do you feel, Amy? My mom bid again at 1.9, and that kind of made my tummy hurt a little bit, but the average for week two was 2%, so I was still pretty confident that we could do it. Chile? I'm just, I was just hot, hot. I'm fanning myself. <laughs> Phil's thinking about it. I yeah. can see Colleen thinking about it. What about LT? Yeah, I'll go. LT is in. And yeah, we're a couple of average guys, seeing how that's the average. We'll give it a shot. LT and Tom think they can lose 2% or more. Who's ready to bid 2.1%? Who thinks they can beat the average? Who's ready to up the ante for 10 grand? Colleen does! <laughs> the yellow team, Jerry, just cool as a cucumber, 2.1%. You know, I didn't expect Yellow to bid as aggressively as they did. For Colleen, knowing that her dad's got these limitations, I was shocked. I was shocked that she really wanted to put herself in that position to jeopardize their time here. Are you guys going to let him do that? You guys are sitting there awfully quiet. We even agged a couple of the contestants on. We're like, are you going to let her outbid you? If they got up too high and they couldn't lose the weight, then it, that would be one spot that we wouldn't have to worry about. I could lose the weight, Lucy. When it got over 2%, I said to my mom, don't move your hand anymore. And she was looking at me like a little kid, like, can I please do it? And I was like, no. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. That's it. Yeah, 2.2. Gray steps up. Gray is in. They are willing to do it at 2.2. Colleen thought she had that one in the bag. Gray is ready to walk away with 10 grand. Oh, oh hello. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, now, Chalet, you <laughs> did raise your paddle. 2. You're saying 2.3. 2.3. Amy, you look nervous. I don't know. She's, she's pretty smart, so I'm just letting her do it. Pretty smart. We'll see if she's smart after this. The question is, who is ready to step up? Who's ready to compete for $10,000? 
Come on, Phil. I think Colleen can do it. We'll see you in your battle. <laughs> All talk, no action over there. I was definitely the more vocal person, but you better believe that my dad was whispering in my ear and kind of nudging me a little bit there to, to keep going. There you go, there you go! <laughs> and that is it. Colleen and the yellow team are prepared to lose 2.4%. Does anyone want to take on Colleen and go to 2.5%? After I put the paddle up for 2.4, I was kind of just like sitting there smiling like really big, like, okay, someone else. Throw a bid out there. Come on, anybody? Anyone interested in outbidding Colleen and Jerry? Going once, going twice, sold to the yellow team for 2.4%. Right. They are our high bidders. Jerry, Colleen, as a family, you need to lose more than 13 pounds, and that will make you $10,000 richer. The $10,000 would be a beautiful thing in my life. I understand what the goal is, what the mission is, and uh, now it's time to get dirty and let's do it. Be aware that if you fail to do that, that will put you automatically below the yellow line and in danger of elimination. My dad and I both thought this was an attainable goal. With the amount of weight he has to lose, and the amount of slack that I've been pulling up behind him, we really think that we can reach it, and we really feel that we could potentially be $10,000 richer. Good luck, yellow team. Good luck, guys. into the house to see Colleen and Jerry with a t-shirt on that says 14 on it. And I'm thinking, 14 what? Why are you wearing a shirt that says 14? Um, we did a bidding thing, and we were bidding on the percentage of weight loss for week two. And uh, my dad and I bid 2.4%, and that means we have to lose more than 13 pounds, so hence the 14. What happens if you're wrong? Well, if you do it, you get $10,000. And if you don't? Automatically, you're serious? Colleen and Jerry bid that they could lose 14 pounds in week two. I don't know what they were thinking. People notoriously have trouble in week two. I mean, I've tried to set up some system so that we don't have a tragic week, but there's no way of knowing. I think you've lost your mind. You know, what if 11 pounds would have kept you here? What if 10 pounds would have kept you here? I believe we can do that. Yeah, great. But I just don't think that you'd be like, if we don't get 14 pounds, it's not good enough and I'm going home. That's basically what you've done. I need for Colleen and Jerry to see that there are consequences for the choices that they make in life. So I'm going to beat the crap out of them, physically and emotionally. Coming up. Will the contestants be able to overcome the dreaded week two plateau? I'm gonna have to beat this 14 pounds off of you or you're gonna go home. Later, a very special guest appearance. I'm Rocco Despirito and I'm a chef. I don't even know how to boil water. <laughs> Whoa, this is not like that in a house. <laughs> and everyone will be packing their bags tonight. Nothing says a family trip quite like a road trip. <laughs> Walking over that hill, we see these huge water slides. Only thing I'm thinking is, I cannot recall not one time in my life that I ever wanted to go down one. Welcome to your second challenge. As you all know, succeeding in this competition is definitely an uphill battle. Today's challenge will test just how hard you and your family member are willing to fight to stay on top. Trust me, you have never faced an uphill battle quite like this one. We've decided to call this game Sprint and Slide. Here's how it works. On my go, the clock will start, and one team member will slide down the hill. When you reach the bottom, you must then run up the hill and hit your team-colored buzzer before the clock reaches zero. Once you've done that, your round is complete. However, if you fail to hit your buzzer within the time allotted, you and your partner will be eliminated. Each slide is over 200 feet long. The slide may look fun going down, but trust me, it's a steep climb coming back to the top. 
So that'll be a little tired. Teams will alternate players every other round, and we'll go as many rounds as we have to until there's only one team standing. Does everyone understand? Yes. I was not thinking it was going to be fun because the wind was blowing at like 25 miles an hour, and it was like a pretty major climb uphill. So I was like, oh, this is just going to be absolutely miserable. Well, I know you've been away from your families for a long time. I know you all must miss them, and I know their support is what's helping you get through this task. So I can't imagine a more perfect reward than allowing a phone call home. I want to win this challenge so bad because I really want to call my dad. I'm dying to talk to him, just to remind me why I'm here. This was not an option to lose. I looked at Ed and kind of said, you know, we have to win this. Our youngest child, Rhett, was diagnosed with autism. And so it would be nice to call home because every now and then you got to remind yourself in the middle of how hard it is, what you're actually here for. Now, before we get started, Jerry and Tom will not be participating in today's challenge for medical reasons, which means Colleen and LT, you guys are representing your teams by yourselves. While the other families will alternate every other round, you will have to compete in every round. It is now time to play this game. Are you guys ready? Ready. 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 Then let's do this. Let's get started. Oh my gosh. The last time I've been on any kind of water slide, I got stuck right in the middle. I was like, oh, great. My childhood fears realized again. <laughs> Walking calm and cool. You want to stay in this competition, you have to make it back up to hit your button in a minute. Brady's slowing down. He's having trouble getting up that hill. Brady, go! Michelle is the first one back. Ed right behind her. Phil, Chalet, Colleen, all about to make it back. All right. Brady is hobbling back up that hill. Looks like maybe he got hurt on the way down. He's got 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ground team is the first one eliminated. We really didn't want to win this challenge because we don't want to be considered a threat in the game. But we didn't want it to look like we were giving up either. So Brady did really good. You know, he made it down the hill and then he, you know, limped his way up slow enough to where we could get knocked out in the first heat. The other half of your team now has to complete the same task in two minutes. On your mark, get set, go! Eva dives right onto the course. Colleen and LT are getting better at this. One minute, 28 seconds, go! Amy is struggling. She's in the middle of her slide, and she cannot get all the way down. Come on, baby. Amy, you got to get down that slide and get back up in time. We're at 47 seconds. Amy's speed walking back up that hill. She's on her way to her butt. Colleen, no trouble coming back up. peva has got no trouble making it back up. Renee is on the finish. LT is finished. Amy's got a lot of time to make up. I know you want to talk to your boys, Amy. Get back up here. Come on, Amy. Amy, you got five, four, three, two, one. And with that, the red team is out of this competition. <sighs> Come on, we got to get to the top. Clap.
When I got to the top of the hill and I realized that we had missed the opportunity to get the phone call home, I started crying because I really had wanted to call the boys and talk to them. But, you know, I also think about them when I'm on the treadmill and that I'm doing this for them. So we're going to get through it. Time to make it a little bit harder. If you look behind you, you will see the clock says a minute 30. Remember, you are playing for a chance to call home. Oh, my goodness. Each time got harder and harder and harder. And when they went to a minute 30, I knew we were going to be in big trouble. On your mark, get set, go! It's time to make it a little bit harder. If you look behind you, you will see the clock says a minute 30. Remember, you are playing for a chance to call home. You can do it! On your mark, get set. The first run I did, I was like, this is no big deal. I can do this. But the next one gets down to minute 30 seconds, and that's when things got a little bit nerve-wracking. Yeah. You've got five seconds to go. LT, can you make it? Yeah. Another team is out. Three down, four to go. Go! The one and a half minutes seemed like 30 seconds, you know? I got to the bottom and I'd look up and it'd be less and less time and I'd think, okay, this is not that fun anymore. We are turning it right around and we are going again. It was really tough having to go every single interval, but you know what? The shirt with the 14 pounds on it, it's a constant reminder of what I have to get done before this weigh-in and it was a great workout for the goal I'm trying to attain for the week. All right, we're gonna go again. Go! We kept going over and over again. We had less chance to rest. I am going to die. My legs hurt. I couldn't breathe. My body had started to hurt. You've been going at this for over an hour, and no one has been eliminated. It looks like everyone wants that phone call. Go! Time to go again. We are going again. I mean, it was, it was tough, it was brutal. You start feeling your legs uh, wear down, you can feel that, that burn, you know, inside your legs, and um, you just have to dig deep and uh, just keep going. Pink team is struggling to get a bail. Come on, one more time. This game is wearing people out. Not going! Amy finishes, 23 seconds to spare. Heba, you got 20 seconds. 10 seconds. Come on, one more time. Five, four, three, two, one. And with that, the pink team and the yellow team are out. I would have loved to call home, but I'm really proud of myself. A couple weeks ago, you would have found me barely making it up the three flights of stairs I have to go in to get into my apartment. And here I am, sprinting up and down this hill and feeling good about it. We've got two teams left, orange and purple. Chalet versus Ed. I want to win this challenge so bad because I want to call home. This was not an option to lose. Like, Ed and I were going to fight, fight, fight until we, you know, came in first place. Amy, I don't know. Just try, Mom. Oh. After the first million and a half times we went down the slide, my mom really started to feel it. And I just kept saying, Mom, it's okay. If we don't win, I just want you to finish this round. I didn't want us to quit. You got a minute and 30 seconds left. Who wants that phone call home more? On your mark. Get set, go! And another solid start. Lay, slowing down that slide. Come on, Shalay, lay! Ed on his way back up the hill. Shalay right behind him. Ed, come on, run! Ed, about halfway up the course, he's got 35 seconds to make it to the end. Shalay, struggling this time. 30 seconds to make it to that button. Oh. 
The next time you're doing your treadmill workout, try boosting the incline. You're gonna change the muscles you're training, you're gonna increase your intensity for a greater calorie burn without having the impact of running, and it's gonna add some variety into your cardio so you don't get bored. disappointed that we didn't get that phone call, but we did fight a good fight. My mom's 51, so she's over 20 years older than Ed, and she, she gave him a run for his money. <laughs> Orange team, congratulations. That's an amazing victory. That was 18 rounds you guys went through to win a chance to call home. You get to call your dad. I get to call the dog. <laughs> but you also have a decision to make. You will be able to allow one other team to call home as well. Hey dudes. Hey, hey dudes. So what's, what's going on? What's Ready to go to the pool? We just wanted to tell you guys that you know how we won the extra phone call yesterday? Yeah. yeah. And we just really like thought about it and thought that since your son is autistic, it may be more beneficial for you to touch base with him. So we're giving you the extra phone oh, call. Oh, so thank you so You're much. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Thanks, You're very welcome. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Amy and Phil, they have three kids at home, and I just thought that Amy and Phil could really use like a phone call with their kids. I kind of broke down right there just hearing the news a little bit that I might be able to talk to my kids. Dad. Hey, Pearson. Dad. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Are you feeling better than before? Or are you, still <laughs> are you feeling like crap from all that exercise? <laughs> I'm feeling like crap from all that exercising. <laughs> Dad? Yeah, Pearson? I'm proud of you. Oh. I didn't think I would be as emotional as I was when I got on the phone. I think it was a mixture of being happy that I've got such a great family and being sad that they can't be here to fully understand what I'm going through. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Rhett. OK, let, let, me, let me talk Charlie to Brown. Rhett. Let me talk to Charlie Brown here real quick. All right. Hi, Daddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, Charlie Brown. Hey, are you being good for Aunt Joan? Yes, sir. You are? I'm going to go to the greenhouse. You could do Charlie Brown at the greenhouse. <laughs> Our youngest is Rhett. He's the one that was diagnosed with autism. Everything's related to colors, so he thinks he's Charlie Brown right now. He's uh, labeled our house as the greenhouse, so he wanted to go to the greenhouse and he wanted to be Charlie Brown. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Rhett. I lo no, I love you, Charlie. I love you, Charlie Brown. <laughs> I think it's significant that he said he loved me because just the concept of it, as far as how a child with autism sometimes doesn't show the same kind of emotion, it's not something that just comes natural. So I think if he just comes up with that on his own, I think that's, that's pretty awesome. Hey, Rhett. Oh, hey, Charlie Brown. Hey, Charlie Brown. Do you miss us? Yeah. <laughs> I miss you. I miss you, Charlie Brown. I miss you, Charlie Brown. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Rhett. My children really are one of the main reasons why we're here. They give us inspiration. So it kind of gave me a little extra push to know, OK, they're doing all right without me, and, and we'll be OK here a little while longer. All right, guys. Love y'all. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. Uh, okay. That was cool, huh? <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. I can't wait to call my dad today. Just knowing, like, I'd be able to hear him go, hi, kid. Like, hey. Like, that was 
going through my head the whole time. Hello? Hey, Dad. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? How's everything? Good. It's so good to hear your voice. Huh? It's good to hear your voice. You have okay. Are you homesick or what? A little. Well, just, you know. I just don't want you to worry anymore. I'm not worried. Seriously, believe me, I'm not worried. Okay. Believe me, I'm not worried at all, okay? I'm just glad to hear your voice. I'm glad that you are fine, okay? Yeah. And Ed gave me his 10 minutes so I could talk to my dad because he knew how important it was. And dad asked me if I was homesick, and I didn't think I was till he asked. I love you so much. All right. Take care, kid. All right. I love you, dad. Okay, I love you, kid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Be okay. good. I love you. It's hard not to talk to him all the time. But that's part of the experience, and I'm really damn glad I busted my butt yesterday on that hill so that I could talk to him. It was totally worth it. Tonight, in the first hour of The Biggest Loser, <laughs> the contestants learned about the dreaded Week 2 curse and were given the chance to put their money where their mouth is. You lose 13 pounds or less, that will put you automatically below the yellow line. But it's at the weigh-in where Colleen and Jerry's fate will be determined. Your current weight is... Wow! Find out what will happen next in an all-new hour of The Biggest Loser. This morning we were all sitting at the dining table just kind of chatting and I actually had the view facing the windows towards the pool and before he even got to the door I saw Rocco. Hello, how are you? I'm Rocco Despirito and I'm a chef. Hi. How are you doing? Well, I'd seen Rocco before on last year's uh, show when you got to cook with the contestants then. What I want you to do is to feel comfortable cooking yourself. So why don't you come over here and cook the beef? Okay. Just put it right on the stove and move it around. Mm. I mean, this yeah. is awesome. So Super good. good. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Hold up. So I was really excited because I thought, well, if he's here, that must mean he's going to teach us how to cook something. And that was exciting because we've been kind of eating the same food. You know, um, losing weight and getting healthy is, of course, about exercise and eating healthy. And a lot of people think that if you don't have a lot of money, you can't eat well, you can't eat healthily. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. What I thought would be fun today is for me to show you how to cook healthy and to cook inexpensively. So what I've done is I've designed seven recipes, one for each night of the week. And each of these recipes can be made for $7 or less a recipe. So I want to know who the best cooks are on every team. So let's start with the orange team. Who's the best cook in that team? Stand up. Who, uh, who in the yellow team is the best chef? All right, the younger one is the better cook? Well, the, the younger one cooks. is the one who cooks. Ah, that was good. What about with you guys? Stand up. What about in the brown team? OK, cool. And then you guys. OK, stand up. You're the best cook. All right. And the red team, who's the best cook? Probably me. Why don't you stand up and go uh, join your comrades over there in the kitchen? All righty. OK, well, guys, you are the ones who are actually going to come with me shopping, and you're going to be doing the cooking. <laughs> when Rocco had Philip stand up as a better chef, I thought, oh, okay, well, Philip's gonna get to cook with Rocco and, you know, I can just hang out here or whatever. And then he twisted it on us, and I was the one that was gonna have to cook and go shopping with Rocco, which, I mean, honestly, I don't mind going anywhere with Rocco, <laughs> but it was a little intimidating. You guys are gonna stay here, and when we come back, we're gonna cook the food, and you're gonna get to taste it all. And you're gonna figure out whose dish is the best, because the person who cooks the best food will win a year's worth of groceries. Wow. Yeah, awesome. pretty cool, right? Cool, yeah. To have your groceries paid for for one year, that for my family, that'd be huge. It's, it's money that you don't really have to worry about to come up with, you know, so it makes things a little bit easier. Okay, so let's do this. As my dad left, I kind of just was smiling from ear to ear because I knew how uncomfortable he was going to be in the kitchen. And I knew for sure that he was terrified. No pit stops here, OK? No ice cream cakes. <laughs> I don't really go to the grocery store a lot. It's mostly just let's go through the drive through because it's easy and I don't know how to make anything. I have designed seven recipes, and I'm going to give these to you randomly. And each one of these are very healthy recipes. They, ha they contain no fat, no salt. Tom, for you, we have curry turkey and cauliflower stew. My first thought about it was, 
It's going to suck. People are not going to like it because a lot of people do not like cauliflower. Heba Heba, you get a grilled chicken Caesar salad. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Amy, you get to make quinoa pasta with creamy pesto and tomatoes. Great. Jerry, it's a pork and vegetable stir fry with a peanut orange sauce. And uh, you're going to like this a lot. All right, Amy, you're going to be making tiny turkey meatball and chickpea soup. So uh, enjoy that. Thanks. Michelle, grilled chicken with warm mango salsa. Brady, do you know what mussels are? I hate them. You hate mussels? Yes. I hate vegetables. <laughs> I cannot stand vegetables. Well, I'm muscles, a meat and potatoes well, type of guy. Mussels are a seafood. Yeah, I know, and I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much on mussels. It makes me sick to the stomach to even think about it. So, of course, when he hands me my recipe, I was trying to be open minded as possible, but I know it probably wasn't. All right, go do it. Good luck. Right. Thank you. There was a lot of things, especially in the vegetable department, that were highly unidentifiable to me. The only reason I ever went to the produce department in the grocery store was to get a head of lettuce and uh, find out where the croutons were, so. What up, Jerry? Hey. How's it going? Uh, slowly. So what do you need? What are you looking for? Uh, right now, I'm looking for the snow peas. Oh, snow peas. Okay, so we have snow peas here. Mm -hmm. We want to pick the ones that are a little more crispy. Okay. So what you're looking for, ready? Okay. <laughs> hey guys, find any good mangoes? Hey, we don't we don't know how to tell if they're ripe or not. I know it's hard, right? Yeah. From here, you're looking for softness. Softness is the most oh, so important they are thing. Soft so, yeah. Soft. So when you press your finger in there, it leaves an indentation. Mm -hmm. That's about what you want. Cool. You're looking for muscles to be closed because if they're open, they're dead. And I'm tapping it. If it doesn't close, it means it's dead or it's going to be dead soon and you don't want to eat that one. Right. All right. Roma tomatoes, these plum tomatoes, tend to be, uh, on average, the least expensive and the most consistent in flavor. Okay. These look a little yellow, though, to me, mm -hmm. which means they aren't fully ripe, so they're going to be a little sour. If they're, if they're a little yellow or green, they're going to be more sour. If they're bright red, they typically have developed the sweetness. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm looking at the Jenny O, but there's, like, so many choices. I'm not sure Yeah, there are a lot, of, a lot of choices, huh? Uh, ground turkey, ground turkey breast. So, okay, so there's 99% fat free. Okay. That would be, that would be the leanest choice that we can make. Uh, oh, 26 grams of protein? 26 grams of protein per serving, per which serving. is great, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I need about a pound and a quarter for your recipe, so this is cool. perfect, one awesome. package, yeah. Good, so I think we're done. Okay. I was really excited to get back and start cooking the meal because I don't even know how to boil water. So this was a good experience for me to actually sit, read a recipe, and follow the directions. Remember, you're gonna win uh, years worth of groceries. That's about eighty-five hundred dollars. Help me with the Jinu turkey, please. Help me roll them into meatballs. It was kind of a little bit of a mess. People were trying to figure out what was what, how to cut, how to turn on the stove. Did you cut it all? No, Amy, I don't know which one goes to the oven. 300, 350. Where do you turn it to, though? Yeah, cool. Oh, this is not like the oven at home. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even cut the oven at all. Rocco needed on aisle three. It was pretty amusing to see all of us kind of like fumble around in the kitchen. Uh, this doesn't look good. Okay, Something keep stir, happened. Stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. Whoa. You know? I boiled the water and did not boil enough, and he had to save my pasta from being <laughs> too sticky, and so that was kind of embarrassing. Guys, remember to taste your food. It's the only way you know it's good. If you don't taste it, you can't know if it's good. Place food and seasonings in the Ziploc zip and steam bag and seal firmly. Seems easy enough. So you just put it in the bag and put it in the micro? Yeah. Pretty simple, huh? That's cool. Let's try it out. Tear open here. Probably about two minutes total with the seasoning. That's it? That's it. Seal it up and let's see what happens. Wow, look at that. That looks so good. Oh, try your first muscle. I really liked the kitchen scene. I can't lie. I didn't think I would, but... Uh, you know, it, it was really neat. Mmm. That is fantastic. Look at that. Wow, look at that soup. 
For all of us not really thinking we have any kitchen skills, these, this food looks good. Guys, I'm so proud of you. The food looks amazing. Did you guys like it? Did you taste it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's time to see what your loved ones think of your food. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Welcome back, guys. Are you excited? Uh, Aren't you hungry? Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, <laughs> these are the bad cooks cooking. So. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that Amy doesn't have a clue what goes on in the kitchen, I was really worried about what was going to happen because I thought it could be a train wreck. You guys have to now judge what they've cooked. In front of each of you, there's a scorecard, a fork, a knife. And in a minute, you're going to step up, grab a scorecard, taste each dish, and judge them. You won't know who made what, so make sure you're fair. Remember, a year's worth of groceries are at stake here. Could be person on your team. All right, guys, you're invited to start tasting the food. I'm not tasting that. I don't need cauliflower. You won't even taste the broth. Just taste the broth. No. Taste a piece of the turkey sticking out. It could be your husband that made that. I doubt it. <laughs> We tried each of the dishes, and we took little notes, and then we rated them on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 was the highest. Flavor is the most important thing. If it doesn't taste good, it isn't good. It doesn't matter how low-calorie, low-fat it is. If it doesn't taste good, it's not good, right? And the judges tallied them up. The highest score won the prize. All right, let's bring in the chef. All right. Come on in, guys. Come on in. <laughs> Chefs. I'd like to congratulate you. I think you did a great job. And I saw the passion come out in the kitchen. You were very, very interested. You were asking questions. It was really lovely. You did a good job. Being a stranger in that kitchen, I was uh, truly surprised to see how easy this can be done. All you have to do is take a minimal amount of time, and uh, you got yourself a wonderful, fantastic little dinner going for you. All right, with that said, the winner of a year's worth of groceries. With three kids, obviously. We buy a lot of groceries, so the year's worth of groceries would come in really, really super duper handy. The... It's the tiny turkey meatball. Yeah! <laughs> hey, Amy. I'm really proud of Amy for what she did today. It was just a couple days ago that Amy was chopping up the zucchini, thinking it was a, a cucumber, and to know that she cooked something that was voted number one was um, was really great. Congratulations to the winner. $8,500 worth of groceries that you don't have to share if you don't I, want. I'll, <laughs> I'll share. I feel really confident about cooking now. I mean, I know I can make the tiny turkey meatball soup, but I think I'll be a little more daring now and maybe open up a recipe book because I do know how important food is to my weight loss. Thank you. Good. 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 When you go shopping, shop the perimeter. It's in the perimeter of the grocery store that all the fresh food lives. The deeper you get inside, the more processed, less healthy, and more expensive the food is. So guess what today is? Uh, Last chance workout. Oh, no. LCW, baby. Week one, you had a crazy number. Week two, Hard week. When I hear the words last chance workout, I know a lot of pain is about to come, but uh, I have an idea did fall below the yellow line, you know, and it's crunch time here, you know, it's the second week, we gotta bear down. Push. Go! Last chance workout, Tweety Bird. How much weight do you need to lose? 14. How much? 14. Jeez, you think that would be easy? Jillian was pretty pissed off. We were playing Russian roulette with our opportunity here at the ranch, and, uh, she was definitely taking her anger out on me. I'm gonna have to beat this 14 pounds off of you or you're gonna go home. So bend your ass down and pick up the weight. Separate yourself from everyone else because you want to go all the way. Up, up, keep going. <sighs> Think about what you want to achieve. You better put up this week. Eight, get up there. Oh my God. Get up. Today's not a pleasant day. Jillian was definitely taking it up like five notches this week, which really sucks considering our whole team stayed above the yellow line. Up! Oh my God. What the f She's on a f rampage. Do not touch the treadmill. You have to cut me a break. My legs are about shot out right now. You know what? You were last. 
You were last. You know when you get a break? When you show me that you're going to beat over 14 pounds. Good. Wearing this number all week, it puts pressure on you. It plays with your head. Are we going to make this 14 pounds or what? Yes, sir. But if we do accomplish our mission, I may wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> That's it, Philip. Go, baby. 15, 14, You're the man. 13, 5, 4. Uh. <sighs> Down, 6. Get over here. Grab the weight. Now that Colleen and Jerry have made this poor decision, well, now we have consequences for our actions, so let's pay for those. You want to prove that you can do it? OK. This is what happens when you put yourself in this position. Two, pull those elbows in and hold them in. No, 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 no means no. Grab it. Colleen, get the over here and grab the weight. Jill, I am seriously dizzy as I am not even around. Don't you find it ironic that you would back yourself into a corner and then suddenly feel the need to fall apart? I'm not buying it. So what's going on? Because right now, when you need to pull yourself together and focus the most, you're falling apart. And you put yourself in this position. Have you ever been this close? I've never been close to anything. Why? Because I don't let myself get there. Why? Are you scared? Yes. Of what? Failing. Colleen is all heart, but she is sabotaging herself and just said, look, man, if you're not willing to do the work, I cannot help you. And I think Colleen hurt me. Basically, I think you have two choices here. You can fall apart and go home for sure, or you can try and take a chance and hopefully succeed. It's not going to kill you. It's not. <clears throat> I just want to finish. OK, let's finish. Grab it. Down on one knee. Damn it. The thought of automatically falling below the yellow line, it's a lot of pressure, but it's our last chance workout. It's the only chance we have before the weigh-in. So I just, just got to do it and get it done. Walking to the weigh-in, I mean, I was just really nervous. I fell under the yellow line last week, and it's just a crappy place to be. If my dad and I don't lose 14 pounds or more, we're automatically below the yellow line. I just keep thinking about possibly going home tonight, and it, it really takes a piece of my heart out. Welcome to the dreaded week two weigh-in. This could easily be one of the hardest weeks that you will experience. In fact, the average percentage of weight loss in week two of every single person who has ever played The Biggest Loser is 2%. But this week, yellow team, you bet that you would lose a total percentage of weight loss of at least 2.4%, which means you had to lose more than 13 pounds. If you do that, you will win $10,000. But if you don't, it means you are automatically below the yellow line and in danger of elimination this week. In the five years of Biggest Loser history, very few people have had good numbers during week two, and I don't know if it will happen at tonight's weigh-in. It is time to start the weigh-in. Remember, this is a family competition, so it is your total percentage of weight loss as a team that will determine who will take that next step towards a quarter of a million dollars and who goes home. The two families with the lowest percentage of weight loss will fall below the yellow line and be up for elimination tonight. The other families will vote later to decide which family goes home. Vicki, Brady, last week you lost 47 pounds and had the highest percentage of weight loss with 8.1%. So how about you start us up tonight? Last week was phenomenal, but I'm definitely not expecting a number like that. Hitting 47 between the two of us, that's just unheard of. Vicki, your previous weight was 227 pounds. Brady, your previous weight was 313 pounds. Your current weight is... 
Nikki, your previous weight was 227 pounds. Brady, your previous weight was 313 pounds. Your current weight is... 7 pounds this week. Nikki, you lost 4 pounds. The Brown team lost 11 pounds this week. Last week, which was a 28 and a 19, followed by a 7 and a 4, that's huge, huge differences. That's pretty scary stuff. Brown team, you lost a total of 11 pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 2.04%. That is slightly better than the average. It's time to hear from the purple team. Ladies, come on up. It was time for me and Amy to go. And my heart was pounding right out of my chest because I had no clue what was going to happen. Amy, your previous weight was 222 pounds. Chile, your previous weight was 204 pounds. Your current weight is. Shalea, your current weight is 201 pounds. Amy, your current weight is 219 pounds. You also lost three pounds this week. I was hoping for five, but... I was thinking five or six. You seemed very confident when we were at that put your money where your mouth is challenge. Thank God we didn't do it. Watching the numbers at the weigh-in tonight, I thought, wow, if the law of averages figures out, we may have bit off just a hair more than we can uh, take. The purple team has a total percentage of weight loss of 1.41%. It is time to weigh in the pink team. You know, as you make that walk up there, the yellow line is always in your thought process because you have no clue how crazy the numbers may or may not look, and you're always thinking, is it going to be enough? Will I fall below? Renee, your previous weight was 253 pounds. Michelle, your previous weight is 225 pounds. Your current weight is. Okay, your current weight is 248 pounds. You lost five pounds this week. Michelle, your current weight is 223 pounds. You lost two pounds this week for a total of seven pounds for the pink team. Michelle, must be difficult to see that two pound number on the scale. You know, it's difficult, but I earned it. I earned every bit of those two pounds. It's two pounds off my body that I'll never see again. So I'm not mad at it. I, res I respect those two pounds. I think all the work this week more than equals two pounds. It exceeds that. You know, I can't put into pound form the confidence that you get from week two. Yeah, the number's low, but my spirit's really high. The pink team has a total percentage of weight loss of 1.46%. The pink team, when their percentage came up, I was actually pretty scared. Seeing that number and uh, with the goal we were trying to attain, Brown team, with two teams below you, you are safe from elimination this week. You hate to say that you feel glad that other people didn't lose as much weight as you, but this is a game. And it felt really good knowing that Brady and I had the percentage after the pink team weighed in, and we knew that two people were below us and we were safe. Now it is time to see how the red team did. Amy, Phil, come on up. Phil, your previous weight was 308 pounds. Amy, your previous weight was 213 pounds. Your current weight is. Phil, you lost eight pounds this week. Amy, you lost four pounds this week. Red team, you lost a total of 12 pounds. Thank you, Phil. Well, I wanted to get 299. Next week. <laughs> no, I'm happy. I meant that too. I'm happy. Amy? I wanted it to be more, but after seeing everybody else tonight, I'm, I'm relieved. Congratulations. I was excited after seeing the other people's numbers that mine looked okay. Now, I lost eight pounds compared to everybody else. I thought that was great. You can't go wrong with that in the second week. Red team, you lost 12 pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss 
of 2.3%. With three teams below you, you are definitely safe from elimination tonight. Orange team, it's your turn to get on the scale. You'll always be nervous, especially after you fall below the line the first week. So that's always like in your head that it could happen again just as easy. So we were scared. Ed, I have to ask, you have something new around your neck tonight? Wedding band, doesn't fit anymore. It doesn't fit your finger anymore? It fell off in the shower and won't stay on, so. So when you had that wedding band made? I thought it'd be forever, you know, but. Hey, watch it. The wedding band is forever. You know what I mean, <laughs> like being on there forever, <laughs> like. Now you gotta get a smaller one. Sure. Well, let's see if it pays off on the scale tonight. Ed, your previous weight was 318 pounds. Heba, your previous weight was 282 pounds. Your current weight is... 318. Ed, your previous weight was 318 pounds. Heba, your previous weight was 282 pounds. Your current weight is... 319. Ed, your current weight is 309 pounds. You lost nine pounds this week. Heba, your current weight is 280. You lost two pounds this week for a total weight loss of 11 pounds. It can't be easy to see the two pound number. No, I'm glad Michelle went before me because she said it best. I'm not going to see him again, but I really wanted to be out of the 280s. The work I put in this week, I was like expecting to hit 269. And then it's like two. I'm like, is there a one missing in front of that? Orange team, you lost 11 pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 1.83%. And that is good enough for third place. How about Ed with two teams below you? You are definitely safe from elimination tonight. Bob, all three of your teams are safe tonight. Congratulations. When I looked up there tonight and saw that all of Bob's teams were safe, I was really excited because there's three votes on our team and we can decide who goes and who stays. Oh my gosh, 1.41. Everybody's numbers were, of course, lower, but ours was the lowest, so we kept falling farther and farther down the line, and we were really nervous. Up next, we're gonna weigh in the gray team. Gentlemen, you need to have lost more than nine pounds to beat the purple team and be safe from elimination. Uh, I busted my ass twice as hard as I did in week one. I did all right in week one. I pulled an 18, but going into tonight, uh, I feel more confident than I did last week. Tom, your previous weight was 290 pounds. LT, your previous weight was 339 pounds. Your current weight is... When I was standing on the scale and uh, the numbers were flipping back and forth and it landed on plus three, I went from real happy to real pissed off, like real quick. I wanted to put my foot through the screen that said plus three. Anything you can look back on this week to explain what happened? Nothing I can say, I busted my ass. What are we gonna do? Nothing I can do, right? The week's done and over with. Jill? It's week two. It happens in week two. Tom, you lost three pounds this week, LT. You gained three pounds. Gentlemen, you can step down. Did LT disappoint me? Nah, he could never disappoint me. I don't know what happened. I'm actually proud of him, you know what I mean? It was a bad number, but I'm proud of the kid. Great team, since you didn't lose any weight this week, your total percentage of weight loss is zero, which means you are definitely below the yellow line and in danger of elimination this week. When LT and Tom went up and LT gained three, my heart was like beating out of my eyes. I was like, oh my God, now we have to go up there. And it was just not an easy one to follow. Now it is time to find out who will be joining you below the yellow line. Will it be the purple team or the yellow team? Yellow team, I'm sure it has never gotten far from your mind. You are wearing the number 14 for a reason. In order to be above the yellow line, you need to have lost 
more than 13 pounds. If you do that, you will be $10,000 richer. I think Colleen's like a huge threat. I mean, she's gonna win The Biggest Loser if we don't get her off. I mean, I love the girl, but I'm not gonna cry if they fall below the LM. Yellow team, it's time to see how you did. Walking up to the scale, I was shaking like a leaf. I was just so nervous. We were trying to obtain 2.4% and we went for it. Seeing the low numbers was very discouraging, but I really still felt like we had a chance going up there. Colleen, your previous weight was 208 pounds. Jerry, your previous weight was 363 pounds. We're looking for you to lose more than 13 pounds. Your current weight is. Colleen, your previous weight was 208 pounds. Jerry, your previous weight was 363 pounds. We're looking for you to lose more than 13 pounds. Your current weight is. Colleen, you lost six pounds this week. Jerry, you lost five pounds this week. It must be hard not to feel like you let Colleen down. No, absolutely not. My dad did not let me down. My dad worked so hard this week, and I am so proud of him. My dad could never let me down. He could lose zero pounds this week, and he would never let me down. How does it feel hearing her say that? How should the dad feel, you know? Proud? Absolutely, absolutely. It's extremely disappointing not hitting 2.4%. I really thought we could beat the odds this week, but you know what? Six pounds is a phenomenal number. Yellow team, thank you. No, we didn't get $10,000. Yes, we went below the line, but in the long run, we lost 11 pounds together, and you, money can't buy that. Well, Colleen and Jerry, because of the bet you made at the beginning of the week, you are definitely below the yellow line since you fell short of your 2.4% goal. With 11 pounds, your total percentage of weight loss this week is 1.93%. Not only would you have been safe, you would have been in third place. My dad and I are up for elimination, but we really need to be here. It sucks being below the yellow line. This is the worst feeling ever. It is one that I wouldn't wish upon anyone here on the ranch. The gray team and the yellow team are below the yellow line, and they are up for elimination. Two of my teams are below the line. Both are equally dire with regard to their need to get healthy. It's a lose-lose situation. Welcome to The Biggest Loser. Pink, purple, brown, red, and orange. You have one hour to decide which family is going home tonight. Bob, Jillian, it's time to say goodnight to your teams. Yellow team, gray team, you have one hour to get your things packed. To everyone else, good luck in making a very difficult decision. I will see you in one hour. This could be it for me, and, and the thought that it could potentially be ending tonight, it really, really takes a huge chunk out of my heart. I just want to thank you guys so much, no matter what happens. Well, right now, below the yellow line, we got one foot out the door and the other on a banana peel. Yeah, I'd like to get back to my life, but uh, the more I stay here, the more education I'm going to get, the more training I'm going to get, and I'm definitely going to lose weight. I definitely don't want to leave early. I need to be here. I would love to be here longer with LT. I feel that I could get a lot more done here. You know what? I helped Orange stick around last week. I took a shot last week by keeping them here, and hopefully, they remember that. If they got my back, they got my back. If not, then you know what? They're not a man of their word. This is my theory. LT's gonna pull a huge number next week. He's gonna pull a freaking 20. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna knock us under. I know that I'm voting for Colleen and Jerry no matter what you guys do. LT and Tom gave us the extra votes and saved our asses out of their friendship for us. 
the gray team kept me here another week and where I come from, when you're somebody's friend, you don't screw them over. LT and Tom are a bigger threat. Yellow is going to be number one next week. That's going to bite us in the ass. I, I feel like we should vote gray. Even what anybody else decides, I'm going to say uh, yellow. LT's got to go. He's got to go. Well, all you guys who think that gray needs to go, y'all can own up right now, and y'all can go and talk to them and tell them they're going. No surprises. I think that's the manly thing to do. Let them know that you're voting them off. We were still talking. I mean, where, where's this come? Where does the attitude come from? I mean, what attitude? Brady. What attitude? Brady, you look like you're going to punch somebody or Oh, something. trust me, you'd know. There was a lot of tension because they're both such great teams, gray and yellow. It's hard to vote with your heart and your head. All's fair in love and war, so we'll see what happens. Coming up, the biggest loser transformation moment. See how the eliminated players look today. The Biggest Loser Club, it's changing lives. first week I saved the orange team from going home I just hope that orange sticks by their work that if I went below they they, they wouldn't vote me off because I had to do a lot of convincing to keep them around we'll see what happens I mean like I said it's a game my dad and I really really need this and I, I truly believe that Jillian is saving our lives and in order to continue that process we really just need to be here Tonight, two teams fell below the yellow line. Both families want to be here. Both families have worked hard. And they all have a good chance of becoming the biggest loser. But unfortunately for one family, that dream is about to end. Colleen, any regrets? Absolutely not. I refuse to live my life with any regrets in it, and the bet was most certainly not one. Tom, anything you look back on this week wishing you'd done differently? No, not really. We knew coming into it week two. It's a tough week, you know. Thought I worked hard. Is what it is. Okay, we're gonna go around the room, and each of you will reveal who you have voted for and why. The first team to receive three votes will be eliminated and asked to leave the Biggest Loser campus immediately. Purple team, we're gonna start with you, Amy. I just want to say that both of these teams have become like family to us, but. We are eliminating this team because we just feel that if the yellow team would have won their bet, they would have stayed above the yellow line and it would have been us. So um, we're eliminating the gray team. Gray team, that is one vote for you. If you receive two more votes, you will be eliminated. Orange team, you're up. This was a terrible decision. Um, most of you know that Ed and I have close relationships with our fathers, so these teams um, both, like to me, represent something really important in my own life. You know, these kids are here and they want their dads to be healthy, and that's a big deal. I want both dads to stay. Um, sometimes when you want to be loyal and you realize it's probably not gonna make a difference in the end, you just kind of have to go with your team, so. It's with very heavy hearts that Ed and I are running for the gray team. Gray team, that's two votes. If you receive one more vote, you'll be eliminated. Red team, you're up. We had a really hard time making this decision. We really want to see both of those teams over there live healthier lives, but we also had to consider that this is a game and who would also possibly pose a bigger threat in the future. And because of that, we voted for the gray team. LT, Tom, with three votes, that's enough to eliminate you. Sorry to tell you that you are not the biggest loser. You have a long road ahead of you. Mm -hmm. But we are going to see you at the finale, where you'll still be competing for $100,000. Are you gentlemen ready to take on that challenge? Oh, yeah. We ain't quitting just because of this. Come the finale, eyes will open. I look forward to it. All right, gentlemen, it's 
time to say goodbye. Another difficult decision, but another week that you have all survived, which means you guys have to gear up and get ready for the next challenge. Because while the biggest loser is a journey, all of you are about to go on a whole different kind of trip. Every single person in this room will be packing their bags tonight. And nothing says a family trip quite like a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> and you all are going on a road trip to the Grand Canyon. <gasps> Lots of hiking. <laughs> oh, boy. I lost 27 pounds in two weeks. You know, that's, that's an incredible number. I think that's awesome. I'm not disappointed, you know. It would have been nice to stay here, but it, it just it wasn't meant to be. The Biggest Loser has saved my life. When I came to the ranch, I was on nine pills. Now they're all gone. I don't take any more pills. I feel great. I can breathe, and it's a great feeling. Now I know what I'm supposed to be doing when I get home to stay off of them. My life's going to change when I get back because I don't have to get up every morning and open up all them little yellow jars and take them pills. I'm going to have more energy to run around with my dog. If I can, you know, spend more time with my wife out walking, she likes to walk. It's going to be changing for the good. I already knew my father had it in to do what he's doing here. He's going to make everybody in the family proud as well as me, my brothers and sisters. So next week I'll just have to drop 20. That's what I'm going to have to do. I gained three pounds. I came to a fat loss show and gained three pounds. Would you be mad like if you went to like a makeover show and they made you uglier? America, the next time you see me, I am gonna be $100,000 richer and the at-home biggest loser, freaking champion, period. In America, next time you see me, I'm gonna be real thin and I'm gonna be better looking than I am now. Before I got to the biggest loser, I thought about going to work, eating, and sleeping. Since The Biggest Loser, I've learned I actually like going to the gym. It makes me feel good afterwards. And my high blood pressure, my high cholesterol, my diabetes, it's all gone. Down to the left, back up, there you go, down to the right. We had the 24-hour fitness trainer come here. We learned how to actually get in a full body workout in 30 to 35 minutes. He showed us how to cook, too. I used to make ziti with an Alfredo sauce. Now I use a red sauce and I use whole wheat pasta. Oh, this is good. It's not the same, I mean, but it definitely tastes better, and I think that fuels our system better than eating the old crap that we were eating. My whole family's overweight. I sit here sometimes and I, and I feel guilty because I'm the one that brought all this bad food into the house, but now I get a second chance. Since Tom and LT come home from The Biggest Loser, we've learned to eat a lot healthier, and it's a good thing for the family. It's coming together really nice and everybody's getting healthier and it's a great feeling.